Welcome to Garrett Tech. Sorry that it's been uh, quite a while since my last video. I've been busy uh, creating my new website, uh, writing something um, on for the Magpie, and uh, and doing some some other things which um, I'm hoping are entertaining you and at the same time giving you some information, some useful information for uh, for your projects. Uh, but this time is review time, and I'm very pleased to be able to. Uh, review uh, the latest product from Fortronics. It is called the PyCon Zero. It's a very little board that packs uh, quite a lot of feature and um, it, it is really exciting to actually be able to do a review for Fortronics. I've been uh, quite passionate about Fortronics for, for a long while. I met, uh, I met them at uh, Pi Party and uh, it was um, extremely nice to speak to somebody so creative and talented um, and, uh, and and be able to observe their latest projects uh, from up close. Um, in the past, I've uh, I've uh, have had some experience with uh, with one of their products is called the Pi to Go Lite, and I was uh, very impressed by the way uh, the design was made. And as I approached their website uh, to get more information, I was quite astonished astonished by the amount of information you can find on that website and the way. It is uh, so well organized. So, but enough with uh, complimenting Fortronics from their f for their great job. Uh, let's go and see whether they've done, uh, in fact, a great job with this uh, wonderful uh, little board, and uh, see what um, what can we plug into it, and um, and uh, how does it work. So these are the Python Zero specification. It is a pseudo hat format PCB which measures 65 by 30 millimeters with gold plated pads and have ready fitted 40 pin female header. It has two full H bridge motor drivers which can drive up to 1.5 amperes continuously. Each motor output has both a two pin screw terminal and a two pin male header. You can choose which to use depending what connectors you have on the motors. The power for the motors can be taken from an external power source or from the PyCon Zero Zone 5, vo 5 volts rail. The PyCon Zero 5 volts can be selected to be from the Raspberry Pi's 5 volt line or from the USB connector on the PyCon Zero. This allows you to use two US USB battery banks one to power the Pi and the other to power the servers and motors on the PyCon Zero. It has four inputs that can accept up to five volts. These inputs can be configured as digital inputs, analog inputs with 10 bits resolution, DS18B20, then it has six outputs that can drive five volts and can be configured as digital output, PWM output, servers and new pixel. This one only available at output 5. All input and outputs are, are, to, are configured as GVS, ground volt signal, and they have a 3-pin male header. This is a common standard for 3-pin sensors and servers and allows direct connection without additional wires. The board also features a 4-pin female header that can connect directly to an HC SR04 ultrasonic distance sensor. You can plug the sensor directly into the header for an ultra compact object avoiding robot. Lastly, it has an 8 pin female header for ground 3.3 volts, 5 volts, and 5 GPIO signals, allowing you to add your own additional features. This is Fortronics website, and uh, sure enough, uh, amongst the latest products, there is the PyCon Zero. And clicking on that link brings us onto the products page where you can purchase the PyCon Zero and you can already read uh, about it, about its features. But mostly you can get onto the blog entry where you get plenty more of information about the hardware configuration but also about how to install the software that comes with it and run a few of the examples. Extremely detailed. Also at the end uh, they are preparing worksheets 
which I'm also using uh, for the um, for this uh, review and nothing here is really left um, to chance I was actually earlier talking to them about this command this wget and this bash which could be contracted into one liner and they explained to me that they did it on purpose they did it this way on purpose so that uh, it's going to be easier for users to do so nothing really is left to chance all is very organized and uh, excellent excellent website so let's go on to uh, the next part of this review uh, let's download some of the code and uh, install it first of all and see what this board is capable of all right at this point what we need to do is to get again onto the uh, website on the blog page and uh, and get to to follow the various uh, instructions which are presented here to perform the configuration and installation of the packages that we need. Uh, I have already done this uh, couple of steps here. So I've already installed the missing packages. I've already configured the, uh, I've already changed the configuration of the boot config.txt. And uh, at this point, we can just do this step here, which will verify that the uh, PyCon0 is connected and properly seen from the uh, Pi, um, from the Raspberry Pi 0. And there it is, it shows a 22 here, which as it says on the instructions, is what it should be showing. So from that point of view, we're fine. At this point, we need to execute uh, these two following lines, which will download the examples and the libraries for the Python 0. There. So it's downloaded these pycons.sh. Um, and now we're executing the uh, file, which will just download uh, everything uh, that was remaining. So now we should have a folder called Python 0. And as we enter the folder, we can now see a bunch of programs uh, which we can run to test that everything is working fine and to test that uh, what they claim can be done with the board can effectively be done. So let's pause for a minute and then bring bring up the camera to show that uh, as I'm executing the code, things are happening on the board. So here there is a summary of the various tests uh, that we can run, but sure enough we can see them uh, into the Python 0 folder. And I have already prepared um, the PyCon0 connected to two server monsters, uh, one NeoPixel, uh, one uh, Sonar sensor, and the, um, and the temperature sensor. So let's do them in order. I'd like to start with the server sensor, with the Sonar, sorry. So let's run the Sonar. It's measuring a distance of, ele uh, of 11 centimeters. And if I put my fingers in front of it, it will decrease. So that, uh, that's certainly a pass. Then uh, let's try the, uh, I'd say we can try the temperature. It's measuring 24 degrees. Let's see if we can increase the temperature. It's climbing up, so that's uh, that's fine, fantastic. Next, we can test the NeoPixels, and they are all shining in white. Obviously, they're connected to uh, the output number five. And lastly, we can uh, test the servers. Now they're centered, and if I move them with the keyboard, I'm using A S and uh, A sorry W S and A D. Uh, no A S and W Z, and sure enough, they are working. Perfect, great stuff. So this concludes our review of the Python Zero from from Photronics. 
I've enjoyed thoroughly going through uh, all the instructions and uh, the uh, various uh, demo uh, programs of the board. It has been a real pleasure uh, reviewing these boards, and uh, I am I am extremely pleased with the level of uh, details from the website. The excellent documentation that comes with it is just uh, is just uh, incredible. I think I think it's an excellent product from an excellent company, which I would recommend to anybody who's interested into getting into physical computing and get a bit more uh, on to, in, in the direction of uh, maybe robotics. Uh, the only thing that uh, could deter you from buying this um, this product is probably to do with the price, which is around about thirteen pounds. I believe that uh, more often than not, we are judging the price based on how much we know it costs the Pi Zero, uh, which is much much less. Uh, nevertheless, I I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't say that this board is uh, is not worth this price, and in fact, I uh, I really do recommend uh, buying this board for the little money it costs. It can uh, change your Pi Zero uh, for uh, into into a, into a much better product. So uh, I've enjoyed, as I said, this uh, this uh, review. Uh, sorry for the long gap between uh, this video and my last one. Um, that's all, folks, for today, and uh, catch you later.